I will speak about enhancing resilience in a changing climate. And the main point I want to make, there are actually two main points, but is the first point is basically we are responsible for climate change, so we should basically admit that we have this responsibility and basically part of adaptation is to reduce our impact on the climate change. The second point is that we can have a better interaction maybe between the industry and climate science to find adequate solutions. So this is just a picture of the planet Earth. We should just remember that we have only one planet. We don't have any uh, as alternative. So if we really get into big trouble, we won't be able to go elsewhere. Now in terms of climate change, we expect major changes in temperature for the mean global temperature of the order of four degrees. But sometimes what is forgotten is if you look at extremes, for instance, temperature occurring every 20 years, we could have increase of up to nine or 10 degrees, which is much more. And actually in terms of frequency, it would mean that uh, one event that is occurring every 20 years would occur every two years. Now in terms of impact uh, on agriculture, there could be also major effects. So we would expect changes in the water cycle, increase in droughts, for instance, regions such as North America. And so this is another issue that we need to take into account. So as mentioned, we have to realize that we are responsible for those changes. So any input of additional CO2 to the atmosphere directly has an impact on the climate system. There is a different link between our action and what is happening in the climate system. So in terms of looking at the risk, we need to take into account this equation, the fact that basically we are part of the risk that is happening. So I see us a little bit like this little man on this branch. We are dealing with a problem, but it's not a problem that is coming from outside. We're actually creating this problem. So part of the solution is to decide that we maybe want to stop creating this problem, maybe stop sowing this branch. On the other hand, of course, we need to consider adaptation because there is committed warming. So even if we were to stop the emissions just now, actually we'll have a decrease in temperature, but we'll, we'll basically stay at a very high level of, of higher temperature compared to the past. This means that no matter what we do, we have to adapt to those changes that are occurring just now. So in the context of resilience and risk adaptation, we have these three main uh, aspects that we need to take into account. The first one is how can we reduce our impact on the climate system, so reduce emission of CO2. Second one is how can we reduce vulnerability, and third one is how can we reduce exposures. Now this is maybe relatively an easy framework if you consider changes, temperature extremes, maybe droughts. There, is, there are some type of extremes which are very difficult. Actually, one that mentions this, this has a high impact, low probability events. You can think of Fukushima, which was not directly a climate event. But these type of events are very difficult to deal with. And in the context of climate change, we have actually also such change that could happen. One example is the possible drying out of the Amazon rainforest. That's a very unlikely scenario, maybe just 5% of change as this would occur. But we cannot exclude that this might happen. So some climate models project that will have major increase in drought in that region. And of course, this would have major consequences. So one issue we are dealing with is how do we communicate this type of information? The next question is, what do, do, what do we do? How do we deal with those risks? And of course, there is sometimes a temptation to say, OK, let's not look at this. We are a little bit concerned about this, so we prefer to forget about it. But of course, that's not a very sustainable uh, response to this issue. And the other point is, is, so if we don't look at this risk, but in some way, we're also already taking a decision. If we don't do anything, it's already taking a decision about what we are doing about it. We should not forget that those changes are occurring very quickly. So we don't want to miss the train. We want to reach a decision fairly quickly. Now, sometimes people are concerned that if we want to remove, uh, reduce our footprint on climate systems, this would mean for us to go back to Stone Age. <laughs> this does not mean that this actually is a suitable answer. I think certainly here in the context of the World Economic Forum, we should see that there are also some technical solution. And I think there should be more interaction between climate scientists and the business sector, basically uh, developing this type of solution. One example is that if you inc increase reflectivity at the surface, either for instance for roofs, but also in agricultural areas, you could decrease the temperature in very extreme events. But basically you can develop technologies, but climate scientists can help assess what, how efficient they would be on regional scale. So the main solution I see is on the one hand, we need to remove or reduce our emissions of CO2, and this can be also solved in part through technological solution. On the other hand, we have also to consider adaptation, so see how we can make, for instance, cities or agriculture more resilient. 
And I would say certainly, as uh, Richard was saying, we have a lot of bright minds here, so I would like to see more interaction basically between people from the science sector and business sector to try and identify new solutions. So uh, my, my question is how can scientists in the industry join force to reduce risk of climate change?